Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Welcome to Project Me with Tiffany Carter, the podcast and posse. I'm your host, Tiffany, and before we get into the episode today, where I am dishing on all the things about hosting my first live event that I've done under my brand. So the episode is everything you need to know about designing and hosting a profitable live event. Because we're not doing any of these things just for vanity's sake. And if some of you are, no judgment, right? If you're sitting just on a bunch of cash and you're bored and whatever your reason is, that's that's great too. Good for you. But I'm all about making profits and having massive transformation occur for my people. Those two things drive me. And one without the other wouldn't be enough for me. And I don't think it'd be enough for you. Most everyone who is attracted to my podcast, to my coaching style, to my content, you guys are heart-based entrepreneurs. You're service-led. You're divinely driven. You really want to help the fellow human out. You want to help them get out of where they're at now and take them to where they want to go whether it's with their health, whether it's with their mindset, their relationships, their business, their money, whatever it is. And it just wouldn't be enough if it was about cash. And we get to help people heal. We get to help people grow. We get to help people manifest. We get to help people connect. We get to help people generate great abundance and love and friendships and opportunities and experiences in their lives. And we get to make a shit ton of money doing it. There's a lot of programming that has occurred over, God knows, probably centuries, that if you're someone who really, really cares about other people, if you want to help people heal, if you want to be a true practitioner of health and wellness, then you wouldn't charge high prices. Um, Okay. Well, that's interesting because some of the people, in fact, almost all of the people who have truly helped move the needle the most in my life, both financially, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, um, they were all pretty costly. And I would happily pay that over and over and over again. Now, are there people who I've learned things from where it could have been a stranger or someone I sat next to on a plane or the story I've shared in another episode quite a few months ago about that flight attendant who still impacts her words still impact me today also because they were said before the emergency landing took place. Thank you. (laughs) I think that's perhaps why it's also cemented in my brain. Yes, of course, there's a combination of both. But if you really want people to show up for themselves, you need to work with the energetics of money to get them to do that. And I felt like this need to, needed to be said. We're in this part of the year, this November and December. This These are going to be the most profitable months of the year in terms of online clients and cash right? There's money to be made every month. But there's projected to be more money spent online this holiday season than ever in history. Isn't that crazy? Over $910 billion in just this two-month period. People are sick and tired of living the same lives, the same crap, dealing with the same stuff. They, they've gotten, you know, they've, they've gotten to experience with all the everything that's gone on in the world and all the death and the tragedy tragedy and being feeling like we're trapped. And I, you know, I still feel that way. 
in some ways, right? I mean, all the stuff going on, and it's more apparent than ever that we we get one life. We don't know how long we're here for. And do you really want to regret not going for the damn thing? Now, if you project yourself even three years ahead and you're not going to regret really going big, big and baller with your dreams, if you wouldn't regret it, then either one, your dream isn't big enough, you're playing safe with your dream, or two, it's not that important to you. And that's also okay if that's not that important to you. You don't have to go after big cash and big things. Not everyone wants that in life. And that doesn't make you less than. That doesn't make you um, not an ambitious person. That doesn't make you any less worthy or not having a purpose. But if you know that you're meant to be here to do big things, make big impact, and you want to have, truly, you want to have that fuck you money, meaning fuck you. I don't depend on any person, place, thing, job, institution, situation, client for cash. I can buy the $5 per container yogurt if I want. I can get the extra avocado for not only myself, but everyone in my family on their salads. I can leave at any moment's notice and not have to wait for a special price on a flight to go somewhere. It's a no-brainer I'm going to sit in first class. It's a no-brainer we're staying at the best resort, the most fun resort. It's a no it's a no-brainer that we're getting organic, healthy meals delivered to our house every week so you don't have to cook. That's what I want for you. I want for you to have the freedom of choice and the freedom of options. I love options and money gets you options. It gets you options on helping various charities. It gives you options to help family members if you so choose. It gives options for and options and opportunities for the people in your life. It gives you options for yourself. You're you're not going to be stuck by your circumstances. But if you don't want to be stuck by your own circumstances, then you have got to take big, scary action if you want baller results. You can't take that toe-dipping action and then crave and yearn for this freedom and all the things that freedom buys and freedom gets you and be low-key envious of all these people you see who have it, if you're not willing to take the risk, if you're not willing to do the scary things, if you're not willing to be vulnerable, you can't have it both ways. Believe me, I tried. In my other business, my first business I started 14 years ago, I tried to do it kind of safe or it was safe and I was still conservative and I tried it for five years. It was the longest five years, I swear to God, of my life. I could have made easily five times the money. Did I make money? Yeah, but what I had to do to make that money because I was playing it so small and I was forcing my will and not hiring top help, not not investing in myself. I wasn't. I mean, yeah, by outsider standards, it looked like I was really going after it because I was a boss babe before that was even a term, right? People thought I was nuts. Um, that did look risky, but it really wasn't risky. I was still playing it safe. I wasn't willing to hire people to help me before I had all the cash just pouring in. I, I was playing cheap with my dreams. And my guess is you are too in some way. You are too. We all are doing it in some way. Maybe you are investing and maybe you have hired all the people and the top coaches. Maybe you have done that, but you're playing cheap maybe with your energy. You're playing cheap with your de decisions. You're playing cheap with your boundaries. You're playing cheap by avoiding doing something you really want to do, like starting a podcast or a vlog or writing a book or putting yourself out there as a speaker. So play, when I say playing cheap, it's not just about you not spending cash, right? You want a business to grow. You have got to spend energetically, physically, mentally, financially. And I'm not saying to where you deplete yourself and burn out. That's not, not, I'm not talking about making a trade-off here. 
But if you're not willing to put your money where your mouth is, your actions where your mouth is, your energy where your mouth is, um, it's not going to happen. You're toe dipping, you're going to get toe dipping results. And I know that's where a lot of you are at and you've been there for a while. And at what point are you going to go, you know what, enough's enough. I'm not going to do this anymore. If you want to give this a really fair shot, how much time and energy are you willing to experiment with? Because kind of toe dipping and saying you're going for it and then it's not working how you want. You're not getting quite the money you want. It's not happening fast enough. What are you doing wrong? I said all those things. I didn't realize I was toe dipping, which is fascinating. This is why we can't do big things alone because our brains are so cunning and deceptive and manipulative because our egos are designed to keep us safe, to keep us comfortable. So you have something already working against you in your own brain, which is nuts. Sometimes I feel like I'm schizophrenic. And I'm not saying that to make fun of people who have that mental illness. It's a real illness. But I sometimes I do to the point where I've Googled this shit because it's like that voice can be so strong. It took me four years to host any form of a live event because of that voice in my head. It was very comfortable and easy for me to be a speaker on other people's stages, for me to be a guest expert in other people's masterminds. Loved it. Why? There's no risk in there. There's only an upside in doing that. And I still love doing those things, but there's no risk. It's not my event. It's not my money I'm putting on the line. It's not vulnerable. It doesn't matter if these people sold out the room or if they only had you know, half half the people buy and it was a flop. It wasn't a reflection on me. So when I when I am enlisted in a to speak as a guest expert in a mastermind or an event, people know I'm very selective about doing so. You either need to one be a client of mine, you know, or a past client of mine, who I also is doing the work because I'm not going to just support you because you've given me money. Two, you need to have me at, involved in your event, right? I'm not going to, people ask me all the time, will you shout out my event? No, because my shit converts. I'm not shouting out your event unless you have me as part of your event. There has to be an even energy exchange. It's wild what people feel entitled to ask when there's not a fair energy exchange. I'm just, I'm so blown away by it. I don't know why I went on that tangent. I think it's because after doing this two-day live event and people saw how successful it was and what a great turnout and the transformations that were made and the fun that we had and all this stuff, I started getting DMs and we started getting requests for me to um, shout out people's events. And for, for what? What do I get in return? Right? There's got to be some something in return and the entitlement is crazy just because I know you. That's wild. That's wild. I mean, I don't know where this is coming from. It's one of my rants, but I felt like it needed it must have needed to be said. Sometimes when I go off on these, it's it's not I don't even know what's coming out of my mouth, which means it's coming from the divine. Some of you listening needed to hear that. Because either you're, you have, your boundaries are off where you're saying yes far more than you're saying no, and you want to be successful, you actually have to say no to others more than you're saying yes. I had to learn that the hard way too. So some of you are needing to hear that because you say yes to supporting all these other people. And then when you need something, they are not fucking there. And that happened to me, by the way, at this event. There was there. Was, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but there was definitely a couple people who let me down. And these are people I've very much so supported, shouted out for a long time, for years. And it didn't feel good. It didn't feel good. Now, I know it's because they weren't meant to be involved. It was also a lesson for me because it took me this long to have an event because it's so vulnerable to me. It brought up stuff from childhood of, you know, being raised by a narcissist, there were lots of parties at the house, right? The look at me, come to my party, me, 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 me. And I even felt that energy as a kid. 
you know, I was the kid, the only child who had the extravagant birthday parties, but I didn't ask for that. I didn't want it. I know you guys see some of this shit probably in your neighborhoods or you see it on TV, like on these housewife shows where it's like a $40,000 birthday party. Yeah. I was that kid where it was like a circus party and there's fucking animals and shit. I didn't want that. I didn't want that. I wanted like a big bird, big bird ice cream cake, right? Like I didn't want that. It wasn't about me. So it felt very narcissistic to have an event. And I didn't judge other people who've had events. I shouldn't say that. There's some people that I definitely judge because I felt they had a similar vibe to my mom where it was like the event was really about them and not about their people, not about the transformation. It was really a bigger gain. You know, like they were doing it for publicity. They were doing it so they could look like they were famous, right? So I did judge that. I thought that felt icky, right? You can't fake energy. And I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. You can kind of feel it. Maybe you've even attended an event, an event where it was like, you didn't get that much out of it. And it was a look at me, look at me, look at me event. Yeah, those don't work for me. And then I've also attended events that were beautiful. And I felt the, you know, I felt the love in the room. But I was so resistant for that reason. I didn't want anyone, my, my worst nightmare would be for someone to think I'm like that, right? I didn't want that. Secondly, it was vulnerable because of what I teach. I teach you guys how to set up your offers, whether they're physical products, they're service-based products, whatever it is. I teach you guys how to structure and set up your offers to get consistent cash and clients online and have everything set up so you have the odds stacked in your favor to make the most money on any of your launches, right? So if I teach that and I go to launch something and my launch doesn't go well, well, that doesn't look, that's not a cute look. Do you see how it's really, it's extra vulnerable for me in a sense for me to launch anything. Now, I don't get caught up in that pressure. I think part of it is because of the confidence in what I do and I know what I do works. But I also know that not everything I touch will turn to gold, nor will it for you, nor will it for Kim K, nor will it for Rihanna, nor will it for the multi-billion dollar brands that I consult with with my, you know, my other company. So I, I know that. I know the reality of business. I've been in it long enough to know, thank God. Otherwise, I would get caught up in that pressure and stay really small. But it was vulnerable because of the live event, let's just say people didn't want to come to Tiffany's, you know, I was calling it a party, right? Let's say people didn't want to come to my party. That wouldn't feel good. My inner child would feel like how I did when I got banished to the loser table in middle school right? That wouldn't feel good. It really wouldn't. And it would be very obvious because I'm having, right, a photographer, videographer here. It'd be very obvious that no one wanted to come. And then what does that have to say about me? I've never even hosted um, dinner parties at my house. I'm not the girl who, you know, the people who like throw their own birthday party. No judgment. I've gone to many of those and I've known a lot of people who will celebrate their birthday for a whole month. And I commend you. That must feel very good and safe to you. Um, for me, I don't like a spectacle. That's also probably a small part of why I've never been married. That sounds a wedding sounds terrible to me. So you can get an idea of why this was the most vulnerable thing for me to do. So why did I do it? I don't have to do it. I could have launched about six other things that would have made me five times the money and would have been a lot easier energetically, logistically, all of the things. It's because when I would attend other people's events, participate in other people's masterminds, you know, as, a, as an expert trainer, I was like, you know what, I would love to do this. I would love to try this, right? At least try it to see if I like it, if my people like it, because I care so much about, oh, I'm going to cry. I care so much about you guys and I want the best for you. And I know, I know what transformation occurs when you are in person and you experience this energy and the exercises we do and the things we talk about, as long as that container feels safe. 
Also, my integrity is my core value. I couldn't come on here and tell you guys, listen, big, scary actions. You want to have baller cash? You want to have baller freedom? You want to have a baller life? You got to do, you got to take baller aligned actions. Well, I would be out of integrity if I kept preaching that, but I didn't do things that terrified me. And not that I have anything to prove to you, but it was more so to myself. And I have a great team in place. I have a great support system. And I knew it was time. I knew it was time. And I was terrified. There were lots of tears and people were here. And I did the damn thing anyway. That doesn't mean that there weren't many meltdowns. Um, I, I don't even think the people who attended no- knew this. Um, it wasn't relevant at the time because that, that would have made it about me. So on the two-day mastermind experience was Friday and Saturday. So I had my team fly in. uh, My best friend, Tracy O'Malley, shout out to her, man. Wow. I would never have done it. She wasn't in my life, by the way, because I needed the right support system. You have to have the right support system. People who, not everyone you're paying, but people who you're paying and people who you're not. Shout out to my court, my coach, Cara Alwell, the champagne diet. Shout out to Emmy. Shout out to Samantha Parker. Shout out to Annalise. I have amazing people who I pay as my support. And I have a very small inner circle of people who I don't pay. And I would not have been able to do something this scary because if you go after something that is so wildly vulnerable, whether it's writing a book, starting a business, really actually doing your business all, you know, an all in effort, not toe dipping, you don't have to have the perfect level of support. But if you don't have support, both paid and unpaid, you're almost setting yourself up for failure, really. You really are. So I made sure to set myself up for success. And that, so they came in, I don't know, it was Wednesday, I don't remember now, Wednesday or Thursday morning. I think it was Wednesday night they came in. And Tracy and my right hand, I call her my chief glitter officer, Samantha Parker, stayed at the beach house. I am not kidding you. I have never, I normally don't get like stomach things. That's not, that's not usually what happens to me when I get sick. When I say the sickest I've been stomach wise without getting graphic to where I literally could not leave the bedroom. I couldn't even leave the bedroom to walk out there and speak to one of them. I had to text Tracy at I don't even know what time in the morning and say, girl, I'm really sick. I've been up all fucking night. And I said, I can't help you guys with any of this setup. Whatever you need to do, take my car, you know, take the credit card, take whatever. And I wasn't really going to be involved in the setup anyway. You don't want me involved in the setup. I become a crazy ass Virgo and I have no business. I don't know how to decorate. That's not my jam. I don't know how to lay out like snacks. Like this is not what I do, right? I'm a strategist. And sometimes comedian, right? I don't, I don't know how to do that shit. So I wasn't going to be executing that anyway, but I also was going to, I was going to be the laborer, right? I wanted to help. And Tracy's like, don't worry, I've got it. Later, she said, low key, it was a blessing you were sick because you would have been annoying as hell, which I would have been. And because I trust her and I trust Sam, I mean, they were in my, you know, very expensive car driving all over the place in an area they're not familiar with um, and made it all happen. And I was not even okay to come out of the bedroom until like that afternoon. The event was the next day. Um, We all know that I wasn't just like sick because I ate something. I do feel I did eat something, but it was eating something plus all of my freaking nerves. Imagine if I didn't have that, didn't have that support. I would have, we would have been in a lot of trouble. I mean, and I even said, as of right now, do I need to cancel this? And I was speaking crazy, craziness. And it was like, just let it go. I felt terrible. I felt 
very vulnerable, watching how much work they were doing, you know, and then our photographer, videographer, Lindsay came and then she is helping and all these people were in here helping me. And some of you could go, well, yeah, a lot of those people were paid. So what? There's a lot of people we pay that don't do shit, that don't rise to the occasion. You know, they believed in this vision. They believed in me. These are the people I attract because I'm in integrity. That doesn't mean I don't attract people who aren't in, in integrity sometimes, too. It was it was wildly vulnerable and I was forced to surrender because I was so sick. It was almost like that happened as well for me to, I had no choice but to surrender. I was that freaking miserable where I couldn't even think of anything else. My only job was to focus on feeling better so I could rise to the occasion. And backing up, it's like, well, Tiffany, we want to know, you know, how... How did you, you know, sell out your event? I want to say this. I was more interested. Yes, it needed to be profitable. Okay. And it is. It needed to be profitable. That was very important. But what was more important, especially if you're doing a retreat style like this was, like a two day experience, you're doing something more intimate. It's not like you're trying, it's a room of 250 people and you're selling tickets. That's a different experience. Okay. So if you're doing something, I would say if it's mm, 30 people or less, okay, you need to make sure that you're very careful about who's in those rooms if you care about the transformation that these people have. It needs to feel safe. You need to have like-minded individuals. That doesn't mean you're not from different backgrounds, different businesses, different countries, right? Different different limiting beliefs, different struggles. No, that's all fine, but it has to have a similar vibe. So I'd say the first thing you need to do, and this goes for truly online group programs and masterminds as well. So it applies to both, but especially in person. You need to ask yourself, who is who is this woman or who is this man or who is this person who I want to call in? What are the type of people? For me, it, it were people who were open and willing to be vulnerable, to put their egos aside, to share, you know, no one who was going to posture or um, thought they were better than somebody where no matter how much money and they have in the bank, they were willing to just show up as their full human selves and be collaborative and supportive and coming in with love and working through stuff, that was incredibly important to me. I didn't care if someone had some, you know, had a bunch of followers or they were some TikTok star and they wanted to come to my event and I knew that I would accept them through my application process and then they'd shout out the event. I don't give a shit. I really don't. What I cared about is I felt they would be a good fit. The other thing is you have to be clear with an event of what level the person is at, like whether it is in their health, their personal development, or in my case in business, it wouldn't have been fair at this event for me to have a mix of people who've never started a business, who've never made a dollar, and then people who are at six figures. That's not fair. That's not fair to either of them. Right. So I made it very clear that this was not an event for beginners. You had to have made money in your business. You had to know what you want to make more money doing. So that was a whole point of this event. And that's the whole point of my six month mastermind that I just launched. Right. It's just a different container. It's a six month container where. I will be holding your hand. I will be giving you six months of direct support and guidance and clear direction so that there is no way that this is not going to connect and work. There is no way you're not going to get to the next level financially, mentally, emotionally in your business in 2022. You're getting monthly one-on-one sessions with me. You get a transformational luxury in-person two-day mastermind like the one I'm talking about here on this episode at the end. 
You get monthly group coaching calls with high-end experts that I hand select so that it's strategically designed to bring in the big cash into your business without burning yourself out. I hate when people bring in experts who just talk at you and they're so far ahead of where you're at and they're like, I hired this person. I have an ad agency and I'm spending $100,000 a month in Facebook ads. It's like, well, that's nice, but I'm far from being there yet. So I'm not going to be able to use any of this information. Yeah, that's not going to happen here. On top of it, I am bringing in group text support. This way, we're all in a group text because there's a maximum of 12 people. That's all I'm taking. And there's only nine spots left, by the way. So there's group text support and accountability. This is for weekly business questions. So you guys can collaborate with one another, go on each other's podcasts, do Instagram lives and other things together, but also there for the meltdown days because that's where... When we feel like nothing's working, when we feel stuck, when our head is our heads are getting in the way, that's where we all can we all will feel the most alone. And that's the support you need to keep going because when you're really going for it, your ego is going to fight against you and if you are not setting yourself up with top level, safe, secure and quality support, you are setting yourself up to fail not to win. And that's on you and that's your choice. And I'm well aware this is scary. This is why we are even offering six-month payment plans. So you're you're getting payment plans that I wasn't even initially feeling great about because my belief is if you don't have enough, you know, skin in the game up front, people can start, you know, playing small. But I was like, no, I'm going to do even six-month payment plans available for those people who are, you know, I feel are a great fit right? So that you can get in here and you can do the thing. So there's no excuse, basically. This is so wildly underpriced for my level of expertise and coaching. I mean, you're getting hundreds of thousands of dollars of direct guidance and eyes on your business. It would be insanely crazy for you not to apply If you want what you say you want, the application link is in my bio at Project Me with Tiffany. So that's on Instagram. You can also DM me on Instagram if you have questions. But the reality is apply because I do not want anyone there who isn't a great fit, who's not going to get the best return on your investment. It doesn't bode well for me and it won't bode well for you or the group. And that's what's most important. I'm not keeping these applications open very long because straight up, I need to move on to what I'm, what the exciting stuff I'm launching for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So my team and I have to move our focus. And I know, I already know that there's nine more of you that are like, okay, I'm meant for this. I'm ready. I trust that Tiffany will tell me if this isn't the best use of my time, energy, and money right now, which I will, and not in a rude way. It's not like in a rejection way, but I'll say this, this, I don't, this time, I don't think you'll get the most out of it, but here's where I think you should go. And no, this is not a free, don't apply to try to get some free coaching for me because we can see through that in applications. There were a ton of people, at least 17 people who we did not accept for this two-day experience. And it's not because I don't think those people were nice or great. They weren't a great fit. They weren't, maybe they hadn't done enough personal development or inner work. They were too stuck in ego and not willing to come in, strip down and be vulnerable, which is very scary to do. Or they really were so lost in their business. And it's okay if you're lost, right? But they were so lost, they didn't even really know if how they wanted to make money, who they wanted to help. They didn't even have a niche. And that doesn't mean we're not going to refine that, but that's not who this mastermind's for. If it was just about money, I would have accepted all these people and oversold this thing and made double the amount. But here's what I don't want you to do. Don't ever fucking do that, especially when you're doing a group where it's a small container and you're having people apply, here's why you don't do that. It can be tempting, though. And I learned this the hard way, by the way. 
I learned this the hard way with other things. So I knew not to do this here. And I've attended events and I have friends who are, I coach a lot of people who are part of other masterminds where they got nothing out of it and the needle didn't move in their business and they got very little return on their investment because either people over promised and under delivered or it was the fact that they weren't a good fit for that and the person you know, got a little desperate who hosted the mastermind, got in their own way with their money noise and took the cash. And it doesn't work because then you have people who will never buy from you again. Then you have people who don't give good testimonials. Then you have people start talking about you behind your back and that spreads like wildfire. I would rather have taken the people I did accept to come through and make sure that those people, and I mean, not to say there couldn't be a wild card, but there wasn't. You go and ask anyone who was here, there's not one person who wouldn't say, that was the most transformational thing I've done for my business, if not ever. And I've by far exceeded my return on investment. And I've been very open about publicly tagging and sharing these people. So you can go ask. And there's already several of them that have signed up for the six-month mastermind. And that's the biggest compliment, right? But if I had just taken people for money and wasn't really careful about who I accepted and making sure that they were going to get the best, well, then it wouldn't have been a good experience for us all. So I want to make sure you guys do that. And yes, again, it can be very tempting, but haven't you noticed whatever your offer is, unless it's like a self-paced course, right, where there's no live element. But I know a lot of you who've done one-on-one coaching or consulting or service-based work, whether you're a medical professional, an attorney, an accountant, a lawyer, whatever, you've taken people on the cheap. You know what I mean? Like you've taken people you weren't, you were iffy about, and they end up costing you a ton of energy, time, and money, and you would have happily given their money back to to get rid of them. You were thrilled when it was over. I know you've done that. So just be careful about that when it comes to whether it's a intimate online group experience or it's in person, you need to be careful of those things and be very clear who your event is for and who it's not for. And don't be afraid of saying, because some of you are afraid of like alienating people you know, making people feel left out because you've been, you felt left out before in your life, whether it's as a kid or as an adult. And so it's like, well, I don't want to do that. And then there's scarcity thinking, well, if I say who this isn't for, I'm now eliminating more people who could buy from me. No, no, no. You're actually making it extra clear for the people who it is meant for. And you're going to have more people buy for you, buy from you. If you, I know it, I know it seems counterintuitive, but it's like you think that if I cast a wide enough net, I'm going to catch more fish. No. When you cast too wide of a net, you're going to get the plastic straws, the diapers, and the plastic bottles and used tires from the ocean, right? I would rather you cast a smaller specific net and it is filled with quality fish and no junk. You see what I'm saying? Your ego will like it if you get a bunch of applications or tickets to your event sold or a lot of inquiries. Like your ego likes that activity. But pretty quickly, you're not going to like it when you get on calls with video calls with people, phone calls with people, in the DMs with people. And they say, I can't afford it. Oh, that's too much for me right now. I don't have the time. I don't know or they ghost you, then that's not going to feel good. There's a reason why my conversion rate and the conversion rate of my clients is over 85%. Mine's at 95%, but I've been doing this a long time. I have a lot of practice, right? But my clients, they get to over 85% as long as, you know, they follow what I teach and do the work because they're already weeding the people out who are just excuse givers, and we're never going to buy in the first place, and we're never going to commit in the first place. And they they use what I teach them with profitable content. Their content is selling for them, so they don't have to. I don't ever want you in an energy of selling. 
your content does it for you. Your content weeds out the people who you don't want to work with and your content draws in and magnetizes the people you do want to work with. That's one of my secrets. And when I say content, this isn't just a social media video or something like that. This is your emails. This is your information pages. This is also what you say when you're on calls with people. All of this we're going to go deep into on a granular level inside my six-month mastermind. So if you are tired of using hope as a strategy, I hope this works this time, this better work this time. Um, That's not a business strategy. That's called a prayer, people. That's a prayer. And prayer is not enough in business. Can you imagine being on Shark Tank? And they're like, so what's your marketing and business plan? You're like, hope. What do you think Mark Cuban would say? Or Mr. Wonderful? They'd be like, um, okay, well, that's not a that's not a strategy. You need to leave. What's going on? That's not enough. Manifestation is also not a business strategy. It's a tool right? It's a tool, but it is definitely not a business strategy. That kind of stuff might feel easier to you, right? It might feel safer to you um, because you're not spending the money and then going, God, what if I spend the money and it doesn't work? What if I give Tiffany six months of my life and money and do all this stuff and it doesn't work? Okay. So what my question to you is, what is it costing you to spend the next six months doing a hope strategy, trying different things, doing the same shit, and hoping it just clicks with consistency. How would that feel if in six months you're still in the same spot and you've not moved the needle and you've wasted energy, effort, time, your heart, your mind? How would that feel? Or you can hedge your bet and set yourself up for success And let me guide you and show you my proven ways and have the support on the shit days and work through it and have the accountability so you actually show up instead of using self-will as an accountability tool. That doesn't work. That is not enough. That's not going to cut it. And you know it's not going to cut it. You cannot fail and you, there's no way you are not going to generate more cash As long as you show up, you show up and follow what I teach, you engage in the group, you embrace it, you come humble, open, and willing, there is no way you are not going to, without a doubt, get your investment back. Go apply. Links in my bio on Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany. I'm curious. You guys, take a screenshot and share this episode. Uh, I, I'm curious, did you, do you like my real accounting of what it takes to have a successful event, a profitable event, my angle on it? Because it's very, I know it's very different. And was it encouraging? Or are you kind of going, God, I don't know if I want to have an event. I don't know if I want to do this. Or did you, or do you like where I'm coming from with it? Because you will make more money in the long run if you do it with integrity and not making it only about money to start. You'll be profitable. Don't worry about that. But you'll end up making more in the long run if you follow these principles that I shared today because you're going to have those people sign up again and sign up again and share it with their friends and shout it on social media and give amazing testimonials Because you didn't make it just all about the numbers and all about the money. You made it about the damn transformation and the people. It's people over profits and the abundance will come. Wishing you great health, wealth, and worth as always. Love you guys. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.